It's your friendly neighborhood garage gym bro here, former strength and conditioning coach, current personal trainer, um, permanent garage gym bro. Today, I wanted to touch on a exercise that's long been forgotten, a lot of people don't do, and I think they should do it. Um, and that's a farmer squat. So the farmer squat is simply a squat where we're gonna hold a pair of dumbbells or kettlebells in either hand. We're gonna keep that chest up. We're gonna release the hips like we're sitting down on a curb. If we sit too far back, we're gonna turn this into just a conventional deadlift. We don't wanna do that. We wanna keep it squatty. Should almost look or feel like a barbell hack squat kind of in a way. So I'll demonstrate you can use dumbbells or kettlebells. Both work well. Um, and I'll kind of go over some advantages and disadvantages and pros and cons versus other pieces of equipment or other squat patterns. So the dumbbells work great. Every gym has dumbbells. Um, adjustable dumbbells are great investment for the garage gym trainee. Highly recommend it. These are the Bowflex 1090s, 10 to 90 pounds per, which is nice. Um, take you a long ways for a lot of exercise, but I digress. So farmer squat. Feet about hip width apart, shoulder width apart, depending on your preference. And I'm just going to release those hips back a little bit, sit down, let the dumbbells touch, keep my chest high, and come right back up. So do a few more reps here. Simple enough, that's how it looks with the dumbbells. You can also do it with kettlebells. Our range of motion may be a little limited with the kettlebells, um, just because as you see, the handle is a little bit higher than the handles on dumbbell. We can counter that though by standing on a bumper plate, standing on a step, something like that. But with kettlebells, it's simply gonna look like this. Good, grab the handles. Same idea, big chest, shoulders back, not hinging sitting back like I'm sitting on a curb. So sit down, nice and slow till they touch, come back up, nice and slow, keep that chest tall, come back up. Again, kind of like a hack squat. One more. <clears throat> there, et cetera. First off, it's accessible. You don't need a lot of equipment. You don't need a lot of space. If you have a pair of kettlebells or even a single kettlebell or a pair of dumbbells or even a single dumbbell, again, you can do this unilaterally if you want. Uh, just obviously having bilateral load is gonna double the amount of weight you're using with the same weight. Um, but convenience and not needing a lot of equipment is a big, big advantage to this exercise. Sometimes you may be in a gym and it's just absolutely packed. We all hate those commercial gyms that have like 20,000 members. 20,000 pieces of equipment, but only two squat racks. And there'll be those two people that really know what they're doing training and they're, you know, doing their squats, taking their rest and all this stuff. That's great for them. It's horrible for everyone else though, who's waiting to squat on those two squat racks. Dumbbells will be available. If your gym has kettlebells, those will probably be available. Um, especially if it's a commercial gym, nobody knows how to use kettlebells anyway. So they'll definitely be available. Hopefully they have heavy enough kettlebells to challenge you though, and not just up to like, 35 pounds. But anyway, I'm going on a tangent here. But accessibility and convenience is a big factor, right? Time of setup. Doesn't take a lot of setup. Again, you don't have to set up a rack, get the bar height right, all this stuff, load plates, unload plates, yada, yada, yada. That stuff seems pretty minuscule to worry about. But if you're someone who's really cramped for time, maybe you've only got 30, 40 minutes to train, you, know, you don't want to be, you want to be as efficient with your time training as possible. Um, and three, you know, another thing with the just needing kettlebells or dumbbells, easy startup for home gym trainees or people who are looking to kind of start training at home a little bit more. Um, so that's the first big advantage. Second big advantage, when you compare these to other squat variations, particularly in the kettlebell and dumbbell world, um, I, I've always had a problem with like goblet squats and kettlebell front squats or dumbbell front squats in that the legs usually aren't the first thing to fail, right? Because either the grip is a limiting factor or it's just awkward on the, like dumbbell squats are kind of awkward sitting up on the shoulders is a mobility issue. And then with the kettlebells, there's the whole issue of, you know, we're gonna squat, but what's really gonna fail first? Not my legs, 
It's going to be my torso, you know, my abs, my upper back, maybe some people's shoulders. So generally, I find people fail or see sets in kettlebell front squats before the legs are really fully stimulated. And that's a shame, especially since you're already probably working with less weight than you could use in like a barbell front squat. Um, another big advantage is for people who may have injuries, right? Maybe barbell squatting is no longer really in the cars due to a back or hip or knee injuries, things like that. Uh, I myself, I have FAI, irregular hip shape. I overtrained, did a ton of squatting in my 20s um, and ended up getting a ton of labral tears in both hips. I have arthritis in both hips. So squatting, just barbell squatting, axial loading with a barbell just really doesn't work for me anymore. My hips just can't take it anymore. But, you know, holding the weights beneath my hips seem to help. Like I can do barbell half squats, things like that. Um, holding the weight beneath my hips seems to help my, uh, my labral tears not get flared up as much. So I know a lot of people have back issues, right? And they, you know, they say, oh, they have to hinge back too much and squat or something. They I mean, go on for days about like someone's form and this, that. It's not the squat that's hurting you, it's the way that your squat hurting you, right? But there are certain instances where barbell squatting is just not an option for some people. And then there's instances where people just have like a bugaboo about barbell squatting. They just have it in their mind that they're going to get hurt. And uh, again, I've been a personal trainer for almost eight years, no, almost nine years now. And uh, there's people, you know, I used to be like a barbell, you know, trying to get everyone doing the big barbell lifts. And uh, I realized there's a lot of people, you know, Grandma Susie, she's not going to want to, no matter how safe you make squatting for her, no matter how well you practice bodyweight box squats and then bodyweight squats and goblet squats to the box, goblet squats, and then kind of progress slowly up to like where she can load a light barbell and squat. She just, if she has in her head that it's going to hurt her, it's, it's not going to work for her. And you, there's no reason fighting that. So um, now what I do with clients is, you know, I still focus on the big main movement patterns, but the equipment used and the particular exercises we do for each client is going to be different based on that individual client, their background, their needs, and to a certain extent, what they want to do. So holding the weights in your hands is going to keep the chest, you know, it's going to be, you're going to be able to keep the chest taller. You're going to be able to um, squat deeper, like especially with the dumbbell squat, you can see I was, I was able to go pretty deep past parallel. Kettlebell's a little bit tougher, but like I said, you can stand on a box or, you know, I've got bumper plates. I usually stand on to kind of balance that out a bit. Um, so it's a good squat variation that takes the lower back out of it for most people. Um, and again, the hands are now holding the bar like a farmer's carry, holding the handles. So rather than the upper back, the mid back, the shoulders, the abs kind of becoming the limiting factor as we're squatting down and just trying to maintain our mobility or stability, all that stuff. And oh, you know, all of a sudden, I just can't keep my back up anymore, so I'm getting this weird thing. My legs still have plenty of juice. Holding the bar or holding the weight in your hand is going to make it easier. Same way with lunges. Like if you've ever done walking lunges in a front rack position or even a zercher position, um, the mid back or the arms and the zercher are going to give out before our legs. So that's why I'm always like, you know, lunges, no reason to sex it up, make it fancier than it needs to be. You know, like overhead lunges and stuff, it's like, Man, you're just limiting what your legs can do. It's a, it's a leg exercise, lower body exercise. We want the lower body to be the limiting factor. We want that to be the reason we cease a set. So, you know, that's a big thing. And you can even, if the hands, if the grip starts becoming an issue, because you work with pretty heavy weights, like 100 plus pounds per hand, um, which is completely possible if you do this for a little bit, and if you already have a decent uh, base of strength, wrist straps. Right? Or all these other, they got all these different wrist straps, clamps, grippies, all these things. That I just, I, I still have the old school wrist straps. They work fine. Um, but I know there's a lot of even better grip support equipment out there people use. And those are definitely options. So again, taking our grip, taking our upper body out of the movement and making movement almost more like a leg press in the sense that we're really able to blast the legs um, from there. Some disadvantages, of course. With the kettlebell variation, obviously the kettlebell front squat has more range of motion, right? 
So I'm not saying you should, if you're a kettlebell lifter and you've been doing, you know, a lot of kettlebell programs really um, are based around like kettlebell clean and press and kettlebell front squat. Great exercises, uh, but you know, there is some, I've always just felt, like I said, goblet squat, kettlebell front squat, there's always been something left to be desired. That's why I think like, especially with the kettlebell community, I often encourage people, you know, do some Bulgarian split squats with the kettlebells, do some lunges, you know, make it single leg work because eventually, you know, even if you have 100 pound, 106 pound kettlebells, 48 kilo kettlebells, you know, that's 225 pounds. Most, most young, strong guys who have been trained for a while can front squat that, right? So why make that weight be a limiting factor and really be challenging your core more than anything when you're trying to grow your legs in that exercise? Um, if you're doing it for the core, then by all means, ignore what I said. But you don't have to throw out the kettlebell front squat. It can still be a great movement, and it can it is a huge range of motion. You know, I already showed with the kettlebell, you get more range of motion on the front squat than you do with the farmer squat. Um, with dumbbells, it's probably about the same. It doesn't really matter. And I, I think dumbbell is like custom made for the farmer squat. <clears throat> but what you can do is you can do a really nice bi uh, biomechanical drop set or mechanical drop set with the kettlebells by doing front squats. And then when you start fatiguing from there, drop into a farmer squat. So I'll just do a few reps to demonstrate what I mean. We're just going to swing these up, hike them up, get our kettlebell front squat going. As you can see, I can get big range of motion here. My back staying upright. And do however many, you know, 6 to 12, 10 to 15 range is still better. Then I'm going to drop it because it's like, oh, I'm starting to burn my core and my back started being the limiting factor. And I'm just going to go straight into a farmer squat. And that way I can rep out some more, uh, get some more reps and overload the legs a little more without the upper body being the reason I stop. I can really burn out the quads there at the end. All right, I want to finish out this video quick, just going over some things to look out for um, while you're doing farmer squat, couple errors. Forgive the other kettlebell, it's my kind of conditioning day, so I'm just working in some swings in between as these videos kind of upload. Uh, which I'll apologize for the video quality and stuff. I'm not a tech guy by any means. And this is my first video talking from the camera. I don't know if anything's going to really change as I make more of these in the future. Okay. But I digress. Um, a couple things you want to look out for real quick to wrap up this video. You don't want to turn this into a deadlift like I alluded to earlier in the beginning. So when we're going down, we want to keep this kind of like a hack squat, right? Chest up, shoulders back, but just going back like we're sitting in on a curb, but those knees should travel forward down to here. Um, we don't want to turn this into like this number here where we're doing like a conventional trap bar, dumbbell, kettlebell type deadlift. We don't want it to be loading primarily the hips and the hamstrings. Second thing to look out for is as we start fatiguing, don't start cheating reps, right? Don't start coming down and Instead of coming down, standing upright like so, don't start doing this number where you come down and you're like, eh, and you start rounding and reaching and doing this number, eh, rounding, reaching, or like tilting the dumbbells or something and just coming up. It's just, you know, you're not doing anything but cheating your quad growth on that. So that's it though. It's pretty hard to mess up the farmer squat. You just hold a couple weights in either hand you keep that chest tall, you sit down, let the knees come forward a bit, you pause at the bottom, and you drive straight up, keeping the tension on quads, spreading the floor if that helps. And a lot of people when they're thinking of coming up, they think of, you know, keep that chest up and keep the hips and quads engaged, push the floor apart, whatever works for you. Simple movement. Um, you can use it as a main squat movement, you can use it as a secondary movement. I like using it as like a secondary squat movement for myself. Uh, that's like, instead of doing leg extensions, I'll do farmer squats. So, and I like single leg work as well, but that's a video for another day. So, hope this video is somewhat helpful. I apologize for the quality. Again, not a tech guy. What you see is what you get here. This is the garage. Thanks.